Imagine your all-in-one cooler has a screen and not just any screen. The ROG Rio 4 comes with a 6.67 inch 2K AMOLED display that literally dominates your build. And no, it's not just there to look cool, it's 60Hz panel that you can fully customize. It shows your temperature, your CPU load, even animation you choose. But let's get one thing straight, this isn't just a small upgrade over previous models, this is a massive leap forward. The screen mounts magnetically on top of the all-in-one unit and you can slide it forward or backward to avoid your RAM sticks and get access to screws and yes, you can remove the screen by hand. No screws, no clips, just magnets and pure ROG industrial design. When it comes to design, the ROG Rio 4 looks like it stepped straight off ROG designer's concept art table. Massive, sturdy, with a commanding persons, but right away we hit a big limitation. The tubes are short and thin, which in practice means only one thing. Forget mounting it anywhere but the top of your case, the back, the front panel, even some side experimental layouts, no, no chance. The tubes are simply too short to reach anywhere except the top of case. And if you ask me honestly, it feels like ASUS deliberately designed this all-in-one for their own ROG cases. Like the messages, want everything to look perfectly by our chases too. Fortunately, what is well executed is the screen itself. It mounts magnetically with a sliding mechanism that lets you shift it forward and backward, avoiding the RAM clearance issue and making screws access way easier. That detail makes a huge difference in real build environment. There's also a metal shroud around the screen that gives it a much more massive visual impact, plus a velcro strap at the back with some basic cable management. The details are on point, everything feels like a premium product, that is, until we get to cables. That's the next problem. At first glance, everything seems ready to go. The fans come pre-installed from factory and that looks like a plus until you hit the key detail. The fan cables are orientated towards the front panel, but you probably won't notice that right away. Only after you have installed everything in your case, connected it and hit the power button. You realize the cables are poking out where they shouldn't be. And that means one thing, you have to remove the radiator and take a step back. To be clear, the fans can be rotated, it's not impossible, but the radiator mounts in only one direction, which means the fan orientation needs to be set correctly before installation. And here's the crux of it. It doesn't have to be perfect out of box, but from a brand like ROG, at this price point, you expect it to be tight and tidy, no need for you to fix anything, that's just ROG, we're used to that and we expect it every single time. On paper everything looks kind, 360mm radiator, solid construction and clean finishing, but when you get to tubing things become debatable. The tubes are thin, relatively short and fixed right in the middle of the radiator, what is that the problem? Because that exact position creates a bunch of limitation. Imagine a typical build where you want to mount the radiator at the front of the case, or maybe on the side in vertical mount or let's say for example dual chamber design. Forget it, the tubes just can't reach and on top of that you can't rotate them at the top connection. The bottom part can be rotated but the top can't and that's a serious issue for cable routing and aesthetic. If the fittings were moved to the edge or between fans instead of centered, and if the connectors could swivel, they could have shortened the whole setup, seven tubing length and achieved a much cleaner look. As it stands in smaller builds, it looks overstressed. In larger ones, the tubes look unnaturally stretched even when there's plenty of room. And yes, we know ASUS probably designed this accepting you to install it in their ROG cases where everything magically fits perfectly, but the reality is different. There are dozens of cases on the market, each with its own layout, tolerance and challenges. And then we come to simple truth. There is no perfect universal solution, but from a brand like ROG, we expect maximum flexibility, not more restrictions. Now imagine this, you buy ROG all-in-one Rio cooler. You open Armory Crate expecting to see everything, the pump, the screen, settings, animations, 
etc. But the real 4 is not there. In the software designed to be the central control hub for all ASUS devices, the real 4 simply doesn't show up. And no, it's not a bug. To control the screen, you have to install a separate piece of software called InfoHub. And here's the paradox. ASUS already has a reputation of for Armory Create being bloated, unoptimized and noisy. Instead of improving it, they add another separate app alongside it. Two different software ecosystems for one device. And you know what's worse? At first, you might think the device is broken because it doesn't appear anywhere, but actually, you just didn't know you had to hunt for this hidden add-on. And that's what frustrates. Not because InfoHub doesn't work, it does perfectly, but because this shouldn't be an extra step. If Armory Create already controls the entire ROG ecosystem, then Real 4 must be there. No exceptions, and that's not optional, it's basic user aspect. Okay, let's start with what probably caught your eye about this only one, the screen. A 6.67 AMOLED, 2K resolution, 60Hz, sounds brutal. And really, when you see it in person, it feels like your whole build just got brain. You can display temp, CPU load percentage, animation, even your own static image or video loops. But the options available right now are very limited. ASUS included a few preset screens, some in their signature ROG style, but if you're expecting a rich catalog of themes, animation and widgets, not yet. And that's a big missed opportunity, because ASUS already has a serious design team, very serious. Their static graphics and animations are some of the best in this industry. Imagine a central gallery where you could download new skins, widgets, even the user-made content. The Rio 4 would then be more than just cooling. It would be a personalized command center for your build. As it stands, the impression is huge potential, but the software support is still lagging behind. Which we like change because remember this thing. This is a pre-launch sample we received. And ASUS is known as company for significantly upgrading their software after launch. If they tap into that potential, this screen will become the main reason to buy. Now, let's talk about what probably matters most to you, how well it cools and how loud it actually is. The fans on the ROG Rio 4 spin up to 2750 revolutions per minute or RPM, that sounds powerful on paper, and it is. But in practice, once you go past 2000 RPM, the gains become minimal. Simply put, the noise you get isn't worth a small drop in temperature. For the average user, even gamers, the sweet spot is around, let's say, 40% or around 1250 RPM. Here you get the good silence, solid temperature and an all-in-one cooler that's barely audible even during quiet evening hours. In fact, even during intense gaming sessions, there was no need for the all-in-one to spin faster, unless you're pushing hardcore overclocking. We run two testing modes on two CPUs, the Ryzen 9 5950X and the Ryzen 7 5800X. The goal? To see just how much the Rio 4 can handle and how quietly. So, the Rio 4 cools like a champ even when nearly silent. At 100% fan speed it kept the 5950X at 70 degrees Celsius on pair with ProArt LC360, while the Nocto NH U12A hit 90 degrees. On the 5800X, the Rio 4 led the pack only 53 degrees Celsius, with the ProArt at 55 and Nocto at 64. But the real picture shows when we drop the noise to 45 decibel, normalized, practically silent. Here, the Rio 4 holds the 5950X at 73 degrees, while competitor Spike ProArt climbs to 79 and Nocto alarms at 97. The 5800XT results are similar. Rio 4 stays the coolest and quietest, 58 degrees, while others hit 60 and 66. Looking at power consumption at full speed, Rio 4 pulls the least. 190 watts on the 5950X, while ProArt draws 195 and Nocta tops at 209 watts. On Ryzen 7 5800X, both Rio 4 and ProArt pulls 99 watts, with Nocta slightly higher at 103 watts. When we dial fans down to the quiet 45 decibels, power usage rises a bit but the ranking stays the same. Rio 4 remains the most efficient, drawing 197 watts on the 5950X and 100 watts on the 
5800X, while the others use 5 to 10 watts more. And here's the interesting part, if you wonder why the same CPU uses different power on different coolers, that's physics at work. Components are less efficient at higher temperatures, so they need more energy to do the same job. Technically, the CPU tries to draw the same power, but higher temps change how the energy is used. So, good cooler is more than just silence and low temps. It actually saves the energy and extends your system's lifespan. I mean CPU, VRM and motherboard. Now we come to a million dollar question. How much does all this cost and is it worth it? At this time of testing, the RG Rio 4 was listed at £369 in the UK, which is roughly $460. In France, you can find it for about €390, Euros. that's about $410. But in the US, it's not widely available yet, and there's still no clear picture on when or how ASUS plans to officially distribute it across North America. In other words, from US market perspective, the retail price and availability remain uncertain. For now, these are the numbers we have internationally. Honestly, if someone told me this model cost $500, I wouldn't be surprised. I would probably complain, yell, but not be shocked, because we know how the ROG brand operates. So, when we sum it all up, you get a top tier screen, solid thermal performance, I mean perfect, quiet operation and good energy efficiency. But you also get some limitations that don't quite fit the this price range. Software that isn't integrated with Armory Crate, second cables you have to fix yourself, third and last, rigid mounting flexibility that depends on whether you own their case. So, here's my takeaway. The RG Rio 4 is for the enthusiast who want their build to look showroom ready. If you are in the RG ecosystem and want a center skill unlike anything else on the market, this is it. But if you just want pure performance without the visual wow factor, there are more rational options for more or less money. Either way, one thing's clear. This is the most ambitious all-in-one ASUS and ROG has ever made. And if they improve with within software and more animations, it could become not just the aesthetic choice, but the smartest one with screen.